In this tutorial, I'm going to go over obstructions on the VFR terminal and sectional area charts. We can see the obstruction symbols given on the center of the legend here. Now right away we'll notice that there's two different sizes of symbols and that correlates to the size of the obstruction. Obstructions below a thousand feet are given by the smaller triangular symbol and obstacles above a thousand feet AGL are given by this more tower looking structure. Keep in mind that if an obstacle is below 200 feet it will not be charted on the map but that does not mean it's not there and to declutter the map a group or collection of obstructions are given by multiples of these symbols together and there will usually only be a pair of them next we can see that if the obstruction is lighted there will be the little lightning bolts which are radiating from the top of the obstruction just like a light on a radio tower and we will have information that will tell us what is the height in feet MSL of the obstruction and also the height above ground level in parentheses below it that may or may not be there and then possibly a UC which indicates whether or not the obstruction is under construction if it is under construction you might notice that it'll disappear the next cycle or 56 days because it could be that they've finished building the tower or building and so that you see is now gone. Another important notice here is that it says guy wires may extend outward from structures and that's very important because while you might be in an altitude that's not above the obstruction but you're flying let's say laterally sideways away from it if you're not separated far enough out there you won't see that guy wire until it's too late and those guy wires have a lot of tension basically they're gonna slice through your wing like a knife through butter they're not gonna snap and give away under the load of your airplane so that's a very important point if we look at the bottom right of the sectional chart we'll see that there is a maximum elevation figure given here now the maximum elevation figure will always be the highest point that's either man-made or naturally occurring within a quadrangle. A quadrangle is defined as a box of 30 minutes latitude and 30 minutes longitude. And these are the boxes that break up or set the grids up for your sectional chart. And if I zoom out right now, you can see these quadrangles here. Now you'll s notice that where there's nothing but ocean there's not going to be a maximum elevation figure because it's all flat and it's all sea level. On the other hand, where terrain or man-made obstructions do occur, you'll see every quadrangle has an associated maximum elevation. Here it's 700 feet, 700 feet, 1200 feet, 1200 feet, um, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So going back to here, we'll notice that the first two larger digits is always the thousands of feet or tens of thousands of feet and the smaller digit is always going to be the hundreds of feet so the question is how do they calculate or define their calculation for this maximum elevation figure by definition if it's a man-made obstacle it always has to be greater than 200 feet because remember any obstacle less than 200 feet is not going to be charted so what we do is we take the elevation for the top of the obstacle in feet MSL then what we do is add 100 feet to that because there might be an error in our calculation so let's assume that our obstacles 2424 feet we will add 100 to that which will give us 2524 and then we round our answer and we always round it up to the next highest number in hundreds of feet so 2524 rounds up to 2600 and the maximum elevation will be a large 2 and a small 6 for that particular quadrangle now what if we had a terrain feature that was naturally occurring in this case we're going to take 
the highest elevation of that obstacle, let's say it's a mountainside, uh, the top of a mountainside, and it's 3,450 feet. Like before, we're going to add 100 feet because there might be an error in our measurement. But now we're going to add another 200 feet in addition. And that's because there might be an obstacle, let's say a man-made building or tower, that's 199 feet. If it's less than 200 feet, we're not going to chart it as an obstacle. So there's always that possibility that you have a man-made structure that falls at or below 200 feet and so it won't be charted. So we add that as an additional contingency. So we've got 3554 plus 100 for our measurement error, plus 200 for possible man-made occurrence, uh, obstacle occurrences, that gives us 3750. We then round the answer up to the next hundredth place, like before, and 3750 rounds up to 3800. And so the answer you see is going to be a large 3 and a small 8 within the quadrangle for the maximum elevation figure. And so it's really that simple, but it's important that you understand what it means, how it's measured, and what are the assumptions behind the estimates for these values.